Welcome to the show, everybody. How's it going out there in YouTube land? Um, so, I know a lot of you are like, what the fuck happened? So, died. my computer crashed and we had to record one of the episodes it did not take. So, we are... Essentially, you're not really getting a build to anything. Nitro, with the night after Halloween Havoc, was pretty much a dead show. I mean, it wasn't... They didn't really do anything. They did have a... De- was it a Dean Malenko versus Eddie Guerrero match, or was it... I can't they were together. I think it was a tag match. Okay, so... But that was... Pro- no, because I thought it was a singles match. But it, it, either way, that was probably one of the best matches on the card. Um, WWE is building to Survivor Series, which is what we're doing tonight. We're doing Survivor Series 1995. We're going to kind of try to fast track to the Attitude Era, I think. I think we should try to skip or watch the show, see if they need to be actually watched to seriously. Because I'm going to be honest with you, as as far as, and Basement could pretty much agree with me, the attitude, or the matches and, and shows that we are seeing on Raw and Nitro, we can pretty much do a review of them in like 10 minutes. Because there's not, they're essentially what we get today, just in 45 minute increments. Yeah, we don't we don't need to look at fucking four of the four of the same shows to get to a pay per view or whatever you want to call it, because it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, for instance, I could watch one show from Raw SmackDown and NXT. Well, not NXT, but Raw and SmackDown, mm-hmm. and I can know all I need to know about Survivor Series today, and it's the exact same thing I'm going to say about what we're watching now. Right. I mean, we're gonna fast track. We're gonna try to fast track to the. <laughs> Essentially, when Scott Hall shows up to WCW. So Do you know when about that is? May, it's like the day after they left. I think it was like the very next day he was on WCW Nitro. They did that curtain call. Yeah. And then they. I, I just can't remember the date. And then Scott Hall was on Nitro. Kevin Nash came two weeks later. So. It's, it's like May. It's right around the Bash at the Beach, which is June, which would be King of the Ring. Um, so we'll, we'll try to fast track. We're never, I mean, if something important happens, we're just going to have to pay attention to what show, you know, actually has some important stuff. Uh, but we'll still do the pay-per-views, um, and then we'll go from there. Um, so... Is that all right with you guys? Or? Sounds good to me. If, if a Raw or a Nitro has something important, we will watch it. But we will, once we get to that point where NWO essentially starts, or a couple of weeks before, you know what I mean? Like right when Scott, that's when we'll, we should, that's when we'll start watching every, that's when it gets really good. Well, yeah. especially for WCW, because then their storytelling becomes pretty good. WWE still lags behind, but they catch up pretty quick. Um, so, yeah. So that being said, we are going to watch Survivor Series. I do know that we have two traditional Survivor Series elimination matches. Um, one involving Shawn Michaels. This will be his first match back from the Marine beatdown. <laughs> yeah, he got his hands beat by poor Marie. The bash at the bar. The bash at the bar. Um, and I can't remember. I think this is that one where Razor Ramon is Razor Ramon is on the other team, so it's kind of a fucked up Survivor Series. Um, yeah, it doesn't really make sense for like hit, uh, heels and faces. They're all just fucking smashed together. And there's no, essentially why we're skipping. There's no build to this. They actually they threw the matches together. They didn't have matches to see who was going to be on what team. They just threw these teams together. Uh, Bruce Pritchard talked about this particular Survivor Series in one of his shows, and he did say, people asked him the question, why did you have a mixture? And I think that's the match before the main event, 
why did you have Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon on one team with Ahmed Johnson on that other team or whatever, and you had a couple of the heels on opposite ends? He said, we thought it would work for the simple... F- I don't know what exactly he said, but he said it turned into a drizzling shit. That was it, it, it seems like they just added like the bigger names of the time in the match, and the match was decided a month before it was going to happen, and then they're like, whatever happens outside of that, who gives a fuck? They tried as long to, as people they, get they to see the big to, names. They tried to mix it up a little bit, and it just turns into discombobulated shit, essentially. We'll, Sounds like we'll last night for me. And we will shit all over it. It is, we'll probably be laughing during it, but if you guys have any comments or anything, don't, don't, don't be afraid to comment down below. We'll talk throughout the match. We may go off on a tangent and talk about other things, but we will be watching the match. Um, as usual, we're going to start at zeros, so we'll begin the show, like, right now in three. Two, one, let's go. Mm, Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect is a guest. He's a, a commentator. He was injured. I think he was injured at this time. Yeah. And he was, I think he was a baby face. No, he was a heel. No, I can't remember. He might have been a baby face, but I can't remember. See, I don't, the way, I don't see his son in him at all. Nope. No. But but this show is brought to you by Karate Fighters. He looks like him, but he oh God, does Bob not, his son does not, Curtis Axel does not carry himself the same way as dad did. No, he, he doesn't even look a lot like him either. Like, I can see some similarities, but... I mean, he looks like him. He doesn't have the really blonde hair. His face, he does. His face, he looks like him. Yeah. I think. I mean, you could see that they're they're related, but, like, I don't know. It, it, he's, not he's not, like, a spitting image or anything. No. No. Unless somebody... Okay, you'd have to tell me that he was his son. For me to see it he, is one of those. Like he looks like his, his grandfather, Kurt Saxon. Yeah, he does. He looks exactly like his grandfather, except not as big. His grandfather was fucking huge. Uh, what was his name? Trek. Larry. Uh, Larry the... What was it? The Hammer? The Axe. Something like that. Larry Hennig. He just Larry the Axe Hennig. So he had an axe... Chop was his finishing move. But he was just a huge guy. He's like Larry the ass hand. Axe, you fucking idiot. He's an oh, axe man. All of them said ass. No. Karate Fighters, there it is, Bobby, your favorite. Oh, I know. They, the, 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 Fuck the, yeah. Vince McMahon took on Jerry the King Lawler in the last um, Survivor Series uh, commercial. King cheated. Taped his feet. <laughs> <laughs> so, what Fucking was things for like epilepsy with, fighters? With the, White House in the, <laughs> the, the epilepsy fighters. <laughs> he taped his feet to the thing so he couldn't beat him. And Vince, <laughs> Vince goes, Yo, Jada! Hey, it's JR. Mm hmm. I think he's about ready to have an episode. Oh. He has that look on his face. No. <laughs> like half his face was just like, eh. I guess it's time. Episode. It's the policy. Oh, this is the this is the first of uh, tense eyes. Just like. Is that rated from from Mortal Kombat? Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> it's tense. So Mr. Rice Patties. If you've been watching any of the episodes with us, you know that's tense eyes. He does look like Raiden, though. It I'm not was a lie. joke. He does. Jesus. He does. He does look like Raiden. Senior Rice Patties. <laughs> Basement. <We are> <laughs> let's not get a. Let's not get a. Let's do it. Fuck uh, it. Copyright for NWA Powerish. NWA. What did I say? I read that to you. They did not get a fucking copyright. 
I know, I'm just... <laughs> they took the video down themselves. Yeah, I'm just being funny. You're, no. You know. Nice try. This seems like the cocaine squad here. They are. I mean, well, there was Sunny, so what do you expect? Sunny side up. She recruited. Why does Why does Tom Pritchard fucking do that? With sorry, get fucking fleas or something? Or? <laughs> he looks like he probably does. Looks <laughs> sakes. <laughs> Is that Hugh Morris? I have no idea who that is. That's Ted DiBiase. Oh. No, not him. It's 123 Kid. So, 123 Kid turned on fucking Razor Ramon on Monday Night Raw <coughs> and cost him a match with, with Sid Vicious. It's like you said. Mm -hmm. So, he now joined Ted DiBiase. And he throws up the fucking two sweet sign. Look at this shit. Look at this guy. <laughs> And people nowadays would be shitting on this because he's not dressed like a heel. Right. He's a heel. Motherfucker. Dude, Million Dollar Man is such a badass. I always wondered if he would like accidentally like blow suck in air and swallow his fucking toothpick. <laughs> right? Just like yelling and shit with his toothpick in his mouth. No, nah, the, the, the guy, down, in, the guy, the guy who looked like um, Hugh Morris was Luis Spicoli. Why is Doc from fucking Back to the Future there? I do not know. Right? <laughs> Look how fast the count was. Look at it. This is what happened on Monday Night Raw. Never playing rock, paper, scissors before the match starts. So stupid. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fucking great. Oh, only the <laughs> fucking preacher with the doctor. Doctor Tom doing Pritchard it with the fucking fleas, man. <laughs> That's Bruce Pritchard's brother, by the way. He does look like a dog. Those he dogs with the big a, ears. Yeah, he actually has a tail, uh, vestigial. Oh, he has a wrestling school. He's in a he's a he's down at the performance center. Actually. And yeah, is this like standard uh, Survivor Series rules or Yes. Oh. Yeah. It's an elimination. Oh, there goes Marty Janetti. Fucking his cocaine just kicked in. <laughs> 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 I can feel the eight ball through my veins. <laughs> I mean, doesn't I always look like he rolled around in like large pieces of newspaper before he came out? Right, dude. Bob Holly's straight in a NASCAR. You said this is Louis Spicoli, you said? Yeah, the Rad Radford Louis Spicoli. Rad Radford Spicoli. Louis Spicoli. Driver? Yeah. Whose finisher was that? 
from ECW, Spicoli Driver. I don't know. Wasn't it the FBI? Sounds like something that the FBI had. Yeah, Someone did it. I can't so. remember who. Why don't you look that up, Trek? Do it for the people. <laughs> Do it for my cock. <laughs> I always felt like Bob Holly was just like a very like solid worker. He, he never really had a character I got behind. Until he but became hardcore Holly. I mean, he was still a solid worker then. If you if you ask him, he could beat everybody. Yeah, well. He's, he's, he, Even Bruce Brock Lesnar. Bruce Pritchard, Bruce Pritchard would <laughs> look at. You go. What do you think, Bob? He said, "Put me in the ring. I'll beat everybody." <laughs> <laughs> and then he got dropped on his head and broke his neck. <laughs> Didn't win that one, did you? Fucking newspaper body. It was uh, Tommy Dreamer's finisher. That's what I thought. Here comes, uh, here comes the Uno Dos Trace kid. <laughs> Those trace <tricks>, kid. <laughs> That's Spanish for one, two, three. By the way. The ice uh, ice no, ice. really. The Eins Wein Drei kid. That's German for one, two, three. Un, deux, trois. Un, deux, trois. That I think, I'm gonna assume that's French. Also known as the for best language waffle. ever. <laughs> Fuck the French people. I love them, but I hate them. So I actually hate them. Chris Candido. Or at this time, is Kip. Or Skip. Excuse me. Dr. Tom Pritchard becomes Kip. With the Chris Candido. He, he always looked like he had a Down syndrome body. Like his body was meant for someone with Down syndrome. Chris Candido. Yeah. Didn't help that his face also looked the part. He's a great worker, though. I mean, he is. He was. Yeah. He was great in ECW. I liked him in ECW too. He was a good manager in TNA when he was a. See, he died way. Denton. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't Sonny bang somebody gross? I feel like she banged somebody gross. Uh, name someone she probably did. She Earl Hebner. Pretty soon, yeah. pretty soon it gets. She becomes a backstage girl, and her and Shawn Michaels have an affair. I mean, come on, look at her. You say you wouldn't bang her? I never really liked Sunny. I did. I, I enjoyed Sunny. I, I, I wish I could have enjoyed Sunny. Like. She was like fucking the locker room. She wasn't. She wasn't a very good manager, but I mean, eh, she. Yeah. She was that woman of the times yeah, kind of deal. She was more prone to be sitting on somebody's lap rather than actually helping. She was right time, right place. <laughs> yeah. But she was the most down. Right woman now. In AOL in 1996, I think. AOL yeah, online? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Internet she broke. It is in its infancy, to be honest with you. Right about everybody, everybody knows who she is, though, because she was a sex symbol. Yes. For but, teens. Well, now they do, but back then. She well, no, she was a sex symbol back then. Like this, she's she was always a sex symbol. But she, this is she's only been with the company for a couple of months, so people really didn't <laughs> know a lot about her. Yeah. <clears throat> but she really didn't hit stride until 1996, and then she became the most downloaded woman in in AOL. She had over a million yeah. downloads or whatever. She's like that Lana character where 
Yes. She's she's more eye candy than she is anything else. Yes. But apparently yeah. Lana, Lana thinks she can still play. I'll give her at least some props for trying, but I don't know, man. She's shit. Don't try anymore. No. no. I've seen Lana's nudes. They're not that impressive. She's more attractive than most women I know of. It's true. Lana is Oscar's attractive. Oscar's hotter. It's personal preference. Yeah, it is. I, I feel like Lana's look is from a bygone era too, of like the I'm gonna say blonde bimbo type thing, and that's what she goes for. She's a bit more like. She reminds me of like a blonde woman that loves salsa dancing and cock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, look at that widescreen television. Look at fucking Razor. Oh. It's all, I want to fucking, I want to fucking fuck that goddamn TV screen. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, as 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 long as it is wide, right? Sorry, Trek, what were you saying? I said at least he was uh, sitting the right way looking at it instead of looking sideways from it. Yeah, you got a point. I fucking hate that shit in the back. It's like, I love the way this TV looks from the side. I have no idea what's on it, though. (laughs) (laughs) But they didn't have the monitors. And that's a Kevin Dunn thing, I guess. That's, And I don't know why... It's so that you can get a look at their body or something. They're like, oh, you got to get the full body expression of the wrestlers. But it's just like logic goes out the fucking door. The way they're doing what they just did there makes so much more sense. Just sitting there watching it and fucking yelling about it. Like, I'm going to fuck that screen like it's no tomorrow. (laughs) The thing is, you see the wrestlers enough as it is. You don't need... The, and they they overuse that fucking backstage watching something. Mm-hmm. It's it's almost in every show they do. Right. And and yes, this him watching one two three kid right now. It, there's a reason for it because he turned. It makes sense. On it makes sense. Well, you watch nowadays like you you have fucking Seth Rollins watching Umberto Carrillo for some reason. Yeah, I'll fight him. I'm like what the fuck. Right. Why are you watching this match as a champion when yeah. he was? I know, right? Merle Hefner fucking yelling at Kip for sure. Fucking Barry Horowitz is in this. You know he's not fucking winning. (laughs) Well, he's in this because he's beaten Skip twice. Yeah. He was... Barry Horowitz was Kurt Hawkins before Kurt Hawkins became Kurt Hawkins. Because he had never won a match. And then he finally beat Skip. (laughs) This <laughs> is fucking flipping into the goddamn future. Right. <laughs> they had too many characters with the Macho Man look going on. Like Marty Janetti's Gen- because he's yeah, fucking. I, 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 Marty Janetti once he and Shawn Michaels broke up, it just didn't work. I'll be right back. Yeah, it didn't work for him. I'm going to say that right away. But, you know, it, it, I thank God they did because Shawn Michaels such a great singles talent that don't want him pigeonholed in the tag team division for the rest of his life. Look at his grandma in the front. I like her. Look how into it she is, too, man. I fucking love this woman. They're kissing. They're kissing. It's 
Sorry, I had to go get something to drink. JP, oh, check out the I, grandma I, I in the front row. Which one? The blonde hair beauty. Uh, oh, fucking. Is sitting next to the dude with the red, red shirt and the black hat? Uh, yeah, he looks like, um, fucking, uh, Super Dave. Oh, he looks like, uh, Stephen Hawking. Yeah. He looks like you. Super Dave Osborne. Got now. You. Yeah, no, I see him. I see him. She's got the fucking Bret Hart shirt on. Yeah. See, what's wrong with this? This is such a better angle for this shit. What? With like, the, you have a, in the backstage, you have a bunch yeah. of guys. I can see them. I can see all four guys watching. I can see their facial expressions. I don't need to see them standing next to a TV. Hey, hey, basement. What's up, baby? Make sure you uh, take care of your fantasy thing, because you got like three players out. Yeah, I usually don't even look at it until like Wednesday or Thursday, to be honest. Well, I, I'll, I will just let you know. And thank you. Thank you for letting me know because I might not even look at it, to be honest. But thank you. I'll set that shit. Yeah. Who am I, who am I even facing this week? Me. Oh, come for you. Uh, who am I, Bobby. Who am I taking on then? Heather? Yeah. Gina or Heather? No, I, I, I beat Heather. G Gina. Yeah, uh, Gina, Gina beat basement. Yeah, put me barely. Right, put me right back in first place. Mistakes were made, but that's yeah. because I don't know shit about football. Basement, me, basement, me, me and you fighting for second place. I'd have it no other way. It's getting close to the end of the season. We're getting close to the playoffs. Yep. I think I've clinched a playoff spot. I, know that much. I don't know how the playoffs even work, even though I set up the league. I think it's the top, it's top four. Four, yeah. I actually love the uh, blimp that they had going around. I thought that was a cool idea. Yeah, they stopped doing it because people were bitching because they couldn't see. Yeah, but it's so high up. It was distracting, I guess. I think if like they could do like a small version of that now and have it go around, that'd be cool. I actually think the WrestleMania set of this year is going to be great. Just the, the theme lends itself to being great. Well, they have it in the right place. However, it's not going to be used. I hope they have a moat that goes around the whole fucking ring. They won't, but I can tell you what they are going to do. They're going to use that pirate ship as the entrance. Because that, that, where they're yeah. at, there's a pirate ship. But is uh, it like on land or something? Or yeah, like... it's just it's just in one of the in corners of the end. So it's where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, makes sense. I still would like to see them go like balls to the walls. I mean, I, I think the last greatest set they had was the uh, the the one with the um, theme park. Oh, the, the roller coaster? amusement park thing? Yeah. That was a cool one. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was better than the other one with the mask, even though that was not bad. It's just, I feel like that was more of like what I'd see if they would do specialized arenas anyway. Right. That that one with the amusement park was like, holy fuck, man. Yeah, that was 34? Or 30? Yeah. 33. 33. This is 35, right? 36. 36. No, yeah, 36. Yeah. yeah. Harlem Hangover. Because remember, he was like halfway across remember, the ring. This year's was, was what? This year's was a giant LCD screen. Okay. Wasn't this year's the crown, or that was last year's? I can't remember. Uh, what was it last year? I thought it was in New Orleans. No, that was thirty-two. No. It was in New Orleans twice, wasn't it? Okay, well, I don't know. Look. That was 34. 
Eighty five New York. Yeah. Okay, it yeah, was New York, but I don't know. I can't remember what the set was. It was just a... Just a big LED screen. LED, it, had, it had the skyline for New York, I think. Yeah. So, I hope it's outdoors. I love outdoor stadiums. It is. It is. It is. Mm-hmm. Raymond James Stadium is outdoors. <clears throat> outdoors. Oh, God. Broke legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little does he know, sooner rather than later, his leg is going to explode. That's a couple years away, though. Not sooner rather than later. Right. It reminds me a lot physically of uh, McIntyre. He's big, way bigger than McIntyre, though. Well, this is that era, too, right? Like of gigantism bodies. Undertaker, Undertaker and him are the same size. But how big is McIntyre? 6'7 six, or 6'8 six, six, or something? 6'5, 270. 6'5? Six, six, he looks way bigger than that because they build Roman Reigns at 6'5. He's just, no, he's a 6'3. Six, 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 and again, they build the, the Rock at 6'6, six six, and that's not true either. He's only 6'5. I, mean, I think he's actually like 6'4 or something. Uh, whatever, it's an inch. It's a fuck. Uh, it's got Mr. Noodle hair. Mr. Noodle hair. Why did you know he's licking his fucking lips for some reason? All right. He's Establishing. The of that year. Why is he getting involved in this match? Establishing him as a bad, bad guy. Establishing him as a bad guy? Well, uh, establishing him with this guy, with one, two, three. Ah, okay. Friends with Bennies. <laughs> I'm, Sid. I'm so surprised Sid didn't have, like, a better career in wrestling. Well, he wanted, he'd rather play softball. Yeah. But this also get, goes against like everybody saying Vince McMahon loves these big muscle men because fucking one two three good got a hell of a push for his size. He was the opposite, yeah. small and skinny. And for everybody that can pick and choose like these big muscly guys that oh god, big, big and muscly guys that Vince McMahon loved, he also loved like the just big stature guys, big wide men, fucking. Little small. He's like pretty much all types of body sizes as long as they can be used properly. (laughs) That's our only TV, man. (laughs) How are we going to watch the rest of the show? You've heard of Don't Look? This is Don't Say It. Just don't say it. <laughs> How much cocaine do you think he did? Jim? Enough. He did. Yeah. You see him in the back? <laughs> It's not cocaine, sugar. (laughs) Oh, that man, he was just a great talker. That's all it was. So you look at Paul Heyman and you look at Jim Cornette and they're like the polar opposites of talkers, but both equally great. You don't have like the Jim Cornette version nowadays as like a manager or anything like that. They just don't exist, unfortunately. Because everyone's so PC nowadays, they're afraid that what he will come out of his mouth. Well, 
he did today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he didn't stumble. Hey, no, he didn't stumble. <laughs> he said what he wants. Right, but I think it was. I, I'm not gonna lie. I hate to say this, and I know I'm gonna get kind of heat for it. I don't think in the context that he said it doesn't make him a racist. I laughed. What That's if, all I'm going to say. What if, what if it was a bag of fucking apples and he, he said it? Would that still be considered... See what I mean? It's food. Well, th this is where I said, like, in certain cases, like, if it's, if it's humorous... It shouldn't be looked at in the same light as someone being like literally is saying something with hatefulness behind their voice. Because I don't think there's anything hateful about it. But he didn't say it with hatefulness behind it. No. Nah. That's what I'm saying. Thing. And people take everything as how how do I say this? They take it literal. They, they take your they take it out of context and be literal, and it's not. I, I, for me, it's not, for me, it's not a problem, personally, no, but that's I, just I, me, I, and unfortunately, like, the world is just, I'm in the past, I guess. Yeah, it, 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 whatever, it, it, it is what it is, I get it, but it, it's still, does, did, just because he said that, does that make him, no, it doesn't, sorry. But then... If people are just because he's from the south, that's stereotyping him that he's. A oh, he's 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 gonna be land blasted regardless because oh, he's, he's that character. He's already right? being land blasted. He's already being land blasted, and and he's a very controversial figure in wrestling anyway. So it. What, who cares? It's, all it's a new day. Yes, it is. Look how packed this place is, man. Holy fuck. Who the fuck is this? Um, Minoru Suzuki. I really don't know. <laughs> but these are all Japanese women and fucking all under blaze. And except for, uh, Bertha. 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 Bay. Bertha Bay. Yeah. It's probably because the Lundra Blaze is like selling herself as the woman's wrestler. So it'd be like, so let's give. These are all women that Lundra Blaze brought over yeah. from all the Japan wrestling. Yeah, because Because they Blaze could wrestle? Yeah, yeah. They could. Right. Lundra Blaze um, was doing what the women are doing now, or in, in, in all honesty, like showing that women can actually wrestle instead yes. of being just TNA. Look at that. Fucking. Uh, the women, the women in w, in, in Japan could could wrestle. Because their their whole like they didn't have the entertainment aspect. It sure. was built upon wrestling. They had the gimmick. They're fucking. You can see that they are. Oh yeah. Game. Nice. Here comes, here comes Marty sister. <laughs> Martha Janetti. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> she just fucks that fucking. I'm just belly flopping. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. This is for you, Marty. <laughs> Maybe she was supposed to land on her feet and she couldn't. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That... <laughs> if you, you have to watch along with us in order to understand what we are laughing at. So, oh my lord. This is Aja Kong. This is the one that's with the AEW and Awesome Kong and her. Yeah. 
I'd still fuck her. She was old here. Yeah, she looks like she never ages. Like, she looks like she never ages because she's old enough. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was brutal. She did it twice. Yeah. Is there out I'd still fuck it. I, I don't know. Jesus Christ. Just drop on the head. Yep. Yep. And she's about to die. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. She ran into a tank. She, she's actually American. This Asia Kong. She's not from Japan. She wrestled in Japan, but she's American actually. Yeah, I think she was first born, first generation born here out of her family. She's she's dead. This is not a bad match. No. He may have. We just don't know. Oh, that was... Oh! Yeah, she's dead. Somehow not. Missing out. Alundra Blaze has got to take on. Apparently, she, go ahead, Bobby. Apparently, she tore her Achilles off the bone. What? Ember Moon. Who tore her Achilles off the bone? Ember Moon. That's why she hasn't been wrestling. Oh, she's she's gonna be off for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. She's gonna be out for a good year. She has to learn how to Fucking walk again. Fucking Bertha. I wonder Blaze no sold a lot of shit. She could wrestle, but she she couldn't. She, like she knew how to wrestle and do wrestling moves, but to actually like tell the, tell any story in the ring, she's fucking Hulk Hogan. Yep. At the end, that's probably what they wanted from her. So. That's pretty. That's pretty. Well, no, I think it was, but that's a pretty good pile driver. She sold it well. Oh, here comes here comes Bertha Faye. Oh shit. It's fucking Mickey Mouse the later years. Just, just kick her in the fucking vagina. <laughs> Look at Bertha Faye. She's like, Look at me. We just took a big woman. The one rainbow I wouldn't want to find what's underneath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, God. She landed 99% on her. Yeah. Yep. What was that? She this just touched her tit. Over the top bullshit now. Alundra Blaze trying to do too much. Now she's trying to be a showman. Oh, ref has this fucking crazy ass mullet. Oh my god. <laughs> She's butt butt slamming her. <laughs> That's a Ricky she got the idea for. 
Belinda Blaze feels no pain. Terrible. Terrible. Terrible fucking hurricane runner. Someone's makeup, like, literally is where Alundra Blaze ass is, so it does not look good. <laughs> and if this ends a match on, I was gonna say, can't end the match on that shit. Yes, I can. Please, just stop. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Put your tongue back in your mouth, for fuck's sakes, man, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Everything she's done, her tongue fucking comes out. Yeah, she keeps doing this. No, no, it's not a fucking buffet. Close your mouth. <laughs> it's not a buffet. <laughs> this is this is the woman that everybody went nuts for at AEW. When Austin Kong and her, yep. this is Face bad. Off. Yeah, this is this is bad woman. Oh come. Oh, don't ever do that again. Don't stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's not stopping. Stop! <laughs> she's not listening to you, Trent. <laughs> uh, guns. Two, three. Oh, doing the tomahawk chop. Oh, oh that, was, that was strong as fuck. <laughs> yep. That needed to end it because I'm pretty sure she. That was the Judas effect head. before Jericho found it. I love that grandma in the front seat. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> she might be hurt. Oh my god. She reminds me of like if I was playing WCW Nitro and I was her. After every move, show off. After every move, show off. After every move, show off. Fucking. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm number one. Fuck off. Aja Kong, she kind of reminded me a little bit of Vader. Yeah, body size, body type. Aja Kong should never fucking wrestle again. Please. I also agree with this. But she does. In fact, everybody in AEW fucking went ape shit when she showed up there. Like, it was the yep. greatest thing since fucking Wonder Bro. Trash. Yep. It's not the real pleasure, I know, it's just what the light. I was about to say, what in the fuck is this? It's called a piss break. Someone's sucking my dick. Fucking fake ass fucking secret service behind him. <laughs> <laughs> They're just sitting and enjoying the show. <clears throat> Why did that even exist? It, it, it's just because. It's in Washington, D.C. Were they in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, yeah, they made a point of it earlier. Oh, come oh on. My God. Open. They're overreacting. Look at that shit. Thought Pettengill's like, oh. fucking pyro went off. Pyro so went stupid. Off the Secret Service tackled <laughs> him. Yeah, they tackled him. <laughs> and Pettengill. Bam Bam Bagelow's face just sucks. He he he's a baby face right now. Yeah. Nope, you're getting a gold dust match. Gold dust and Bam Bam Bagelow. Enigma. They overuse that fucking term so much in wrestling. They do. Yeah. Yeah.
the fuck? So I don't know if you heard, but Tessa Blanchard beat Brian Cage tonight. So she's champion? No. No. It was a six-man bout, and she beat Brian Cage for a chance to beat Sammy Callahan. To meet Sammy Callahan for the world title. Oh, well, count me interested. Count me not interested. Well, I was never going to watch it anyway. If Tessa Blanchard wins the women's, if wins the world title, Impact will might as well die. I also agree uh, with the first. statement. They, they, they may as well. And I look, I love wrestling, but Impact just shoots themselves. They're trying to push an agenda. They're trying to do their own women's revolu- evolution, revolution, whatever the fuck it is, and this is their way of doing it. And putting the fucking title, I want to see. So I want to see Baron Corbin beat fucking Becky Lynch for this Raw Women's title. Sorry. I just don't want to ever see like I. I think like women versus men can happen if it's a mixed tag match, but I don't ever want to see a woman challenge for a men's title. Just as much as I don't want to see a man challenge for a women's title. Exactly. That that's that's what equality is. It's not the opposite. The fucking women can only the women can challenge for men's title, but men can't challenge for the women's title. You, you're putting yourself in this place where things just stop making sense. Mm-hmm. They, 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 why do they have a women's title? Why does a promotion have a women's title? It should just be a world title. This, yeah. this, this is going to kill. This is exactly, and I hate to say it, this is what Jim Cornette is talking about. Well, this is going to kill Impact? For, for fuck's sakes, I hope so. Because they, they've literally done everything wrong that you can and cannot be killed. It absolutely makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. And that was news was just broken. You're probably not going to see this. People will probably already know about this. Is being recorded, as you all know. But we we are, you know, if something happens, we will put it out there. It was it was it was dropped by Ronnie, who watches Impact. Impact. Which, which is fine. She, I mean, you, you can watch whatever wrestling you want to watch. I'll I'll watch Impact as long as I don't have to fuck pay for. It. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth I'm, I, I'm not willing to watch Impact because it's just too much. It, it's like the lower tier for me for wrestling. And there's too much wrestling already, so like that's definitely not going to make the cut. No, I'm talking and about the fact that they charge an arm and a leg for fucking everything under the sun. Well, apparently they put pay-per-views on Twitch, which is free. It, you, you could pay $16 to watch dark matches. Like, what What the fuck is that? Well, that's them trying to be make it so that they can pay their fucking talent. Yeah, still don't fucking do. But in no world do I ever put Tess, uh, Brian Cage losing to Tessa Blanchard or any woman really. But the only one I see having any kind of chance to stand toe to toe with him, especially Brian Cage, would be Jordan Grace. And even then, yeah, it's, even Grace. then, yeah. even then, like I could see like Marco Stunt or Jungle Boy losing to like. Anybody that has a similar stature, because it's also hard for me to believe that someone like Drew McIntyre is going to go out there and lose to Rey Mysterio, or Brock Lesnar is going to lose to Rey Mysterio, and if that happens, it's going to be because it's no holds barred and Cain Velasquez comes in, because that's exactly what's probably going to happen. Yeah, Yeah. and I hope that fucking Rey Mysterio doesn't win. I have this weird feeling. This yeah. terrible feeling. Oh, and by the way, what you said in the chat about NXT, yes, I, we are going to do that. Yeah, that makes sense, right? For, for this week. We'll talk about what happened this week and last week. 
There's really only a couple of things that was really newsworthy. Um, the what did happen last week? Yeah, well, what we can what we can talk about was uh, we can talk about everything that happened in the week while we're watching NXT, and then when NXT is done, maybe give our Survivor Series predictions and sure. end it there. Oh, God. Uh, we got to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know we're going to talk about it. Miles and what else? CM Punk. CM Punk. Yeah. As far as the shows go, they're all go-home shows, so it's the writing's already on the wall. Well, I mean, like, you can talk about AEW and MJF a bit and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll talk plus, about we, we still have AEW and NXT to go, plus SmackDown, so right. we'll see. Raw, Raw was actually pretty good wrestling. I w- storylines and I, you know, I'm glad that it was wrestling centric I'm going to say that because there really is no build well the build is what it is it's Survivor Series like and there's the one like it just to me it doesn't make a lot of sense because all of a sudden now everybody's like pro pro my brand and then it happens for a month and they don't give a shit afterwards it's just like right. it doesn't make sense in the long run or in any run except for the month we're in which kind of angers me. Like, fucking house party out there attacking everybody. But why? Because they're SmackDown, and SmackDown now hates Raw for some reason, and now it's NXT for some reason, because they have to. Yeah, because they're having a triple threat 5 on 5 on 5 match. It's the same thing for, like, just putting together two guys that have never wrestled just, just to have them wrestle. That yeah. That's literally the exact same type of build. talk some news and we'll talk about what we're seeing and then we'll actually do our predictions for Survivor Series. It'll be good because it'll be able to fill like the gap for not continuously talking about what's happening in ring. I like to watch what's happening in ring but you don't always need to talk about it. Like for tonight we're watching what's happening. How much are we really... We've got Gold Dust versus Bam Bam Bigelow. It's a what are we like? Match because there was no build to it to be honest yeah. with you. They're just they're just showcasing Goldust is what they're doing. Yeah, Goldust will win this match. I can almost guarantee you that. Yeah. And this is the big push for Goldust to win the Intercontinental Title because he wins the Intercontinental Title somewhere in here, I think. Yeah. And then he take. This is also where Roddy Piper. Because at WrestleMania 11 is the uh, what is what is isn't that where they changed? Hollywood backlot brawl. The Hollywood backlot back brawl. The backlot brawl, yeah. I actually like that, though, because I, right there, that I actually really liked. Him trying to struggle to get him over to a pin. Yep. That, that is, Those are the small things that show the intricacies to a bigger guy versus a normal-sized dude. So this bat right there is a typical bat right there is like a... Uh, that's an actual wrestling move that we use in folk-style wrestling. And these are the things that... They just add more credence there or more believability. I think wrestling should do as much as they can to add believability because it's unbelievable in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Those are the things I love to see. And we are doing AEW tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, that's okay, cool. I put out that whole freaking 73 to 27. Yeah, I can see why, though. AEW is the flavor of the month. It's going to be the flavor of the month for several months but also i think there's like like we've talked about before there, there's already the idea that nxt can be watched later i can't even watch fucking nxt live so it doesn't matter right no i get it i can't believe they did that though it makes no sense that AEW would have the ability to get a contract going for canada and nxt still has that is complete bullshit to me
But yeah. the fact that they already have like so many things in place and they've already been doing this for so long to not have something worked out right. is not a good look. And I said the same thing about AEW originally and they had to like scramble to put it together because they've had a year to fucking make that shit work. Yeah, I remember that. So, 42 people. 42 people want to see us do Thirteen people want us to see us do NXT. Forty-two people want to see us do um, AEW. Eight, no. Forty-two people want to see us do AEW, and twelve people want to see us do NXT. I voted for AEW because that's like the only thing I can watch without no, having problems. Fine. That's why I threw it out there because that just tells me that. And I know that I have people that are following me that will might get some views on that. So I'll put out a tweet tomorrow that we will be doing. Uh, so I, so I kind of I wish they were on two different days, to be honest. <laughs> I need to, but we will yeah. still do NXT on Thursday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what time? What time do you get done work? Uh, I will be available for NXT. Well, AEW I can watch with you. NXT I'll be available for when it goes live. When does it go live? It goes live. I think, is that 9 o'clock our time? My time? Nine yeah, o'clock so 10, time. So 10 o'clock my show. time. Yeah, I'll, I'll start the show at about 8.45 or whatever. Oh, right, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll be available for it at 10 o'clock. Okay. And there you have it. Goldust wins. And yeah. it's clothes is too tight on his body. All I can see his penis and ass the whole fucking time. <laughs> he wins with a gold dog, and I know that's not his finishing move, but you gotta remember fucking Bam Bam Bigelow is born some fucking pounds. I would also prefer more matches end without a finishing move. I, I prefer they finish with signature moves or something that looks devastating. I can get behind. I think a finishing move should be something that happens, but it happens like every third or fourth match you're in. No, we're back with Bill Clinton. Yes, everybody's favorite president. Really yeah, he, he he took time away from murdering people to sit down. <laughs> I didn't get my dick sucked, and I didn't kill a child, so I guess I could he took, talk. He took time away from getting a Hummer from fucking Monica Lewinsky. Oh. <laughs> I'm surprised Hillary let him out of the fucking house. I don't know. <laughs> The dynamic shift between... As soon as he got his cock sucked and everyone's like, yeah, he got his cock sucked. He's like, I did not have sexual relations. Yeah, I did. Okay. And Hillary's like... <laughs> Hillary turned into the dominating force after that. Now he looks like a fucking ghoul. <laughs> like Bill Clinton's like soul has been sucked out of his body at the same time as his dick was. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm no, I, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> so many kids. Oh, cool camera. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you got the wing. Home video. What is your favorite iteration, at least look wise, of The Undertaker? My favorite iteration? Yeah. I, honestly, I think this one is. Because he had the. It's just what I'm about to. It was my favorite Undertaker. 
I think yeah. this was like the the version of him that was the most gimmicked. I I didn't like the purple fucking shit as much as I liked. I think the next version of him. I, I, I also think, don't mind the, what what he what he's what he did more recently when he had when he came back finally with longer hair and had the like the old Undertaker fucking gear on basically. Well, the American badass. No, no, no. That was my, my I didn't I didn't not like the American badass, but a lot of people did. And to each I, their own. I did. Here's why I hated the American badass. American badass? What what do we remember the Undertaker as? Always telling people to rest in peace and fucking be in that what's the word I'm looking for, basement? It's the guy that being that supernatural just, character? Yeah. Yeah. And then you get the American badass, he's like a fucking biker guy. Just just a regular normal biker guy. I'm divided with the American Badass because though I didn't like it, I feel like it kind of had like its place in breathing some life back into his Undertaker character. I'm I honestly think like if he stayed the Undertaker throughout his mm-hmm. whole career, would he have been as beloved when he later on after you've seen it time and time and time again? I think him changing is akin to him leaving. That's why, like, I kind of treat the American Badass as a different character altogether and not even close to The Undertaker, but um, I wasn't a fan of it. It was also uh, at a time when I wasn't a huge fan of wrestling. Right. Yeah. I feel bad for the guys who had to carry King Mabel to the ring. Oh, yeah, fuck, man. Well, Especially. Yeah, you know, they had, like, he was the That's injuries. not that bad. You, you put the weight around with what they had. Yeah, eat people. It's not bad. It's, just, it's weight distribution. Yeah. It is. It is. Fucking yeah, can't it's get away from sure. every fucking thing we've ever seen since we started this. Savio Vega has been in a match. I feel. Yeah, yeah. Here comes here comes pig slot boy. Why is <laughs> why is, why, is, why are they together? Rikishi's there. I can get that, but like, yep. he's got a little pig in his him. hands. And Rikishi's there. Rikishi's that. Batu. It's Batu. Rikishi. It's the same fucking thing. Rikishi. Rikishi's yeah. only always a guy I enjoyed though. Yeah. And I felt like he was a mid card talent that I never had any problem with. No. Too bad he never won a singles title. At least I don't think he ever did. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know I if he. Title. I think he might have, yeah. But, yeah, if, if I think he might have won the ice title, does it really matter if he did? No. Because it wasn't a rain yeah. anybody's going to give a shit about. But I always enjoyed him as a worker. Right. Fucking Sal, you're doing the fucking Mamba's fucking ring. Yeah, you got... You got... Cha-cha-cha, or whatever. Cha-cha-cha, or whatever. Cha-cha-cha. Whatever the fuck that is. Do you, do you ever feel like, and I, for the longest time, and even to this day, anytime Undertaker enters, I don't know, man, I just get like that feeling. I love his entrance. Probably the best it entrance is, in professional one of the wrestling. Great entrances. It is probably him and Stone Cold Steve Austin are the only two entrances that I've ever given a shit about. And they're so different. They're like the opposite ends of the spectrum. One is like. Yeah. Hugely theatrical in The Undertaker. The other one is just like the shock factor of that glass breaking and him coming out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the one thing The Rock never had for me. The entrance. His, his entrance was was more entertainment. As soon it as changed you, a lot. As soon as you heard, if you smell... And- but then, then he changed to that, like, helicopter shit and using the DX entrance a little bit. Yeah. But he, when he did that, that was the Hollywood entrance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, if you smell and the crowd fucking loses yeah. their shit. He, that, I will... That was his best entrance, for sure. If you smell... 
what the cock is cooking. But nothing, nothing like nothing for me. Number one, Undertaker. Number two, Stone Cold. Number three. I do like Shawn Michaels. Hey, I do like Shawn Michaels. I like Triple H. Hogan. Triple H has had like some ridiculous entrances. Well, just his, just the, not even his WrestleMania entrance. I liked his game entrance. The, 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 the game? Yep. Yeah, that's, that, that is Those a great entrance. Those are my entrance. top four, top three for sure. Shawn Michaels, yeah. I'd put him up there as number four. And number five. Oh man, that's tough. Rick yeah, Flair, that's tough. I just—he had a great entrance too, man. He did it first. It was simple, or you know, it was simple, but it was—it enhanced. It was so over the top, and it worked for his character so well. I mean, and that's where like all of the entrances we're talking about are literally the character came before the entrance did, mm-hmm. and they just built upon it time and time again. So. Because Rick Flair was the very first one to have entrance music. Yep. Not Hulk Hogan, Rick Flair. Rick Flair. And it was the, um, the, what is it? I can't even think of what the entrance is, what the song is. That fucking song. That's you know the song. One, the Space Isles. But that's not the name of the song. That's such a perfect song for him, too. It is. Oh, he's got the mask on. It's a, yeah, this, yeah. Is broke, this is when he had the broken face. Oh, yeah. yeah, thanks, Mabel. Fucking oh, I, But it, enha- it made his... It helped. They, they made it work. Yeah. It's just like Becky Lynch when she broke her face. Thank you, Nia Jax. Yeah, helped. It, that, created, that literally created the character. Yep. And then Along she, with what you did. And then Becky Lynch ruined it by continuously. I, I think I think WWE ruined it. To be honest. I know, but she. That's well, what I'm going to say. Yeah, but she did. She is. The well, she because because though she has part of that character in herself, she isn't at her core that character, and that's the problem. Um, what would you? Okay, I I always thought this. After seeing Kane as like fucking uh, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah Isaac Yankum, um, I always thought like if they didn't make him Undertaker's brother, what kind of career do you think he'd have? I don't think he would have had one after that. I think he was. I think he even said in an untold thing he thought he was done until they came up with the Kane thing. I think as Isaac Yankum was. A kind of stupid character, but like, I couldn't, I could never think WWE would look at Kane and be like, "Yeah, he's done. We have nothing else for him." Well, they tried it with, with Fake Diesel too, and then I think they were just running out of shit for him. Okay, well, so Fake Diesel is just bullshit. Nature but Nature Boy Ric Flair's entrance music is named "Dawn," which is a section of also Sprock Zara Thustra Thustra. Which is the theme song to 2001 A Space Ops. Yes. But I had no idea what it was called. I just told you. Also thrust through. Yeah, but like I would never have been able to like... No, no, that's why I had to look it up. But it's also called Dawn. Is the... Just call it Dawn. Da, da. No, the fucking monkeys throw the bone into the air. <laughs> I didn't mind this one when he came to WWE in um, 91. I thought his theme was pretty good. Huh? When he came to WWE and they had to have a kind of a different entrance scene because they didn't own the rights. I didn't think his entrance scene was that bad. Okay. I, but WCW was the first one to Oh, you know how I had a really good entrance too? Goldberg. Yeah, I did. Yeah. In WCW, I liked Sting's. I liked Sting, Sting's, Goldberg. I liked Sting's entrance as the crow. I did not like yeah. his entrance as the. Surfer. The, no, that was just Sting whatever. It was okay, but it didn't have the effect that. 
No, the crow entrance entering from the top two was cool. Um, but I will say, yeah, Goldberg had a very memorable entrance. Ric Flair again, Ric Flair. Um, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes didn't yeah. have a theme song, really. Not Andre the Giant did that classical fucking shit. It was WWF is where he, they, that, yeah, that, that was WWF. The WCW one wasn't, I think it was a country song or whatever. Um. Trying to think if there's anybody else that really stands out in my mind. I know it. His he sucked, but the Warrior Basically. had a pretty cool entrance. That got a lot of people going. Do you know whose entrance? The entrance I really love. Shut up! I can see it in your face. <laughs> the Yeti. <laughs> I can see it in his face. <laughs> I knew he was gonna be an asshole. <laughs> the Yeti. <laughs> The Yeti! Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. Oh, there's WCW? WCW, they, they did a lot of copy and paste, though. They, they yeah. used. I didn't. Johnny B. Bad had his own. Johnny B. Bad. I don't know. <laughs> Johnny B. Horse. Not watching. Yeah. Um. The NWO. The NWO. That yeah, was good. DX. DX had a the good four horse. These were the memorable entrances, though. I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Like nowadays, yeah. I mean, they're good. There, there are good entrances, but they're just like, like you, you say, a Finn Balor or when he's the demon. But it just doesn't like capture his character because his character isn't. I don't know what the fuck his character is. Unless he is the demon gimmick. But even then, I don't know what his character yeah. is. It's just like, can't be two characters, and neither of them have an actual understanding. Of, like, the fans don't have an understanding of what they are. Bray Wyatt's entrance when it was the Wyatt. Oh, that was good. That was good. I do, I do like that entrance. That was good. I the, do like the, Shinsuke's entrance. Rock I like it. Not now, but before now. Yeah. Without the word. I do like I do I do like Bobby Roode's entrance still. Not just, not now, but before now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, NXT era? Are we talking about? Huh? NXT era, Bobby Roode. Yeah. Because that's where they added the like oomph to it. Yeah. I drink savages. I actually really liked uh, one, two of Baron Corbin's entrances. I don't like it now. No. But that one where like the black cloud yeah. took over and the one where he even came out to the spotlights, both of those were better than what he does now. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to go back to the lone wolf character. He does, not this. I don't know what the fuck he is right now. He's well, the king of he being a he's, he's a king. Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> Like she the, does. Oscar had a good entrance. Oscar Charlotte does have a good entrance. I, I wish she was a little bit more animated with it, but well, she's she's carbon copying, which Beck, is probably like Beck, everybody says Becky Lynch's. I I, 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 Becky Lynch's like, I like her steampunk, steampunk one. Steampunk yeah, I like that steampunk. Know. But she's not steampunk Becky Lynch anymore. And oh. don't she's the man. Her. Kane had a good entrance. Yeah, memorable. Yeah. I, I never really liked it that much, but it was definitely memorable. Like, Randy Savage had a good one. Yeah. I, I, I know it was good, but I, it, I don't find it as memorable. Fan Balor's demon and shirts. We already we talked about that, that Bob. It. Oh. Ultimate Warrior entrance was pretty cool. Who? Ultimate Warrior. I know he was shit in the ring, but his entrance was pretty cool. No. He just ran up to the ring, fucking coked and roided up. Him, 
his entrance was him fucking shooting coke up his ass and then fucking. <laughs> Put it in any hole. Put it in every hole. It was just fucking, just fucking blast into the ring. Uh, Alistair Black has a cool entrance. Yeah, I do like. I like his. Ricochet's entrance is it's not okay. that bad. It's not that they, bad. Just, just Ricochet's entrance, entrance reminds me of Neville too much. Yeah. Um, Nikki I like the leak in the room. I did, I did Sanity like had a Sanity. really cool entrance. What a wasted opportunity, man. I, I know Undisputed Era's entrance is pretty good. Especially it's simple, but yet... Effective. Uh, Eo Shirai. I do like Yo Shirai's new one. Yeah. Guys. yeah, that's a good one. Uh, it's too it's too soon for me to talk um, a lot about it because I've only seen it like <laughs> fucking Vega's having a fucking seizure on the ground. Selena Vega. Did, did you? I, I thought you said Selena Vega. I was gonna say. Davio. <laughs> Oh, I like the Legion of Doom's entrance. Shield's entrance. I did like the Shield's entrance. That was a cool entrance, I will say. That was Especially one of the better the ones. The when they entered from the crowd, all three of them, that was a cool yeah. entrance. That was different. Um, Man, the well might be dry on this one. Kurt Angle had a pretty good entrance. Yeah. I love when they put the pyro with him and he came out with the two fingers up yeah. and the you suck. That was yeah. good. He did have a good entrance. And his entrance was like, his character just made 100% sense. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is like, the, 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 the thing is like, to have a good entrance, you have to have a character that makes sense for your entrance. Mm -hmm. This is why we're, we're struggling so hard to think of other ones. Because most characters... Fucking nobody knows who they are. What a pile driver. Savio Vega is paralyzed from the eyebrows down. Mankind. Yeah. I do like yeah. Mankind. That was the best of his bunch because I love that car crash sound. And it works so well with his character, too. Well, that was kind the, of the, even, the even before. It was not bad before, too, with that weird, that weird, like, spooky shit. He had that spooky shit. Yeah. I, like I do like the car crash. The Brutes entrance was pretty cool, too. The Brutes. Yeah, they had a good entrance. Yeah. I like the I like Christian's entrance. Christian, the peeps? Yeah, that, that was... That was no, when he came out, it's Christian! And then the yeah. fucking things came down. It didn't last long, too long, but still, I liked it. I know I like Keith Lee's entrance. I just the fucking the fucking I don't like that. It's about the only thing I don't like. It could it could be a lot better. Is all I'm saying for Keith Lee. And I say the same thing for Dijaka the the Dijakovic. Got it. Damian Priest has a good entrance. Damian Priest has he has the next level. I actually really liked EC3's entrance before he became dead. Where he would like point to his fucking letters and turn around. Drew McIntyre's um, entrance is okay. His his soundtrack is great. His entrance music is great. His entrance, like visual wise, I think could be improved upon. Yeah, for the for the visual for what he is, yes, for sure. I like Razor Ramon's entrance. The what? Razor Ramon's entrance. Ray Mysterio? No. No. Oh, no. Booyaka, booyaka. I'm seven feet small. I liked it more when he actually popped out his body at the end. What I would uh, yeah. my bad, he shot out of that fucking from underneath and it just fucking shot it. I, like, I always <laughs> wanted it to malfunction. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> booyaka, booyaka. Flying in the air. Booyaka, booyaka. Owen Hart. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I think we pretty much run well dry. 
You know what? I, I actually like Brock Lesnar's entrance. Oh, Brock Lesnar. Perfect. It's perfect for his character. The music, the pyro, the the whole thing where he just comes out and says, uh, and it just works. You know, I actually like. I liked Jack Swagger's entrance. I didn't mind it. Yeah, the We the People entrance the one before. Yeah, the We the People. I like the music. That was cool. That was a good entrance. I love the music. I love Lita. It's Lita had a good entrance. Yeah. Trish had a good one. I like Jeff Hardy's Whisper in the Wind entrance. Oh, Matt Hardy when he was the broken gimmick. Yeah, that was a, yeah. That was a good entrance. Yes. Yeah. Uh, nice uh, choke slam. Uh, Fucking hell, he carried him <laughs> somehow. That's Triple H. He's got like a two inch vertical. Especially in this era, he's like 200 pounds lighter than he is now. Well, I actually like. I like Matt Hardy's uh, entrance when he had the fat, the Matt packs. Yeah, I like that one. Thank you. I find it funny that people <laughs> didn't get it. I don't get what it's supposed to mean. They're like, Vince is the internet. <laughs> I liked Vince's No Chance in Hell entrance. Yeah. I did like Vince's Oh, that was, that was perfect for Vince McMahon. Comes out with his arms swinging like a fucking <laughs> maniac. You got no chance! That's as far dear, as dear, 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 dear. I can't think of any other really. Hulk Hogan's actually terrible. Hulk yeah. Uh, DX. Again. Yeah, we said DX. Said one, I love this DX grandma. She's into it. Love it. Uh, this is the grittiness of the entrance. Yeah. 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 I like Rikishi's entrance. With with too cool? Yeah. Yeah, with too cool, yeah. That was, a, that was not bad. That's pretty good. I like that. What a choke slam. I that was nice. When I was a kid I always popped pretty uh the Road Warriors when they did their WWE entrance. That was just cool. Well their entrance didn't That was their entrance no matter where they were. Oh, okay. I like them. Do you, do you, y'all, y'all have to go watch it. Man. I know Trek will know. Heather will know. The Freebirds. Yes. Fucking love yes. that song. Bad USA. Bad yeah. USA. If you haven't watched the Freebirds do their entrance, especially Michael P. S. Hayes. Michael P. S. Hayes and Jimmy Garvin, fucking. Do do do. Do, do, do. It's funny, but it's really good. It, it's <laughs> yeah. So apparently, like um, WWE in general, like parted ways with those like CF Money guys or whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah. And since then, I haven't really seen a captivating entrance. No, there hasn't been. So why the fuck did they part ways? Well, Jimmy. Did. Jim Johnston mm-hmm. left, and ever since then they haven't had a very good. But you look at like the talent. Like there was an era in NXT where like the entrances were just fucking great, yeah. and now it's like bask in his glory, feast your eyes, <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> but I will say Io Shirai, Io Shirai's entrance is really good. Matt Riddle. <laughs> it's perfect for him, though. Yep. Bro. <laughs> Bro. Um, I like the entrance. Roddy Piper. Well, his is simple. That's another good one. That fit him, though. Yeah. It's, it's got to have the bagpipes, though, or else it don't work. Yep. Yeah. It's just like with Drew McIntyre. I mean, you can... Th- I'm talking about the bagpipes actually being there. It really... It really that would probably this, be one of the only entrances like that where there's no pop in circumstance. It's just the bagpipes. The bagpipes have to be present. 
in order but to I, I I think this is what like WWE got wrong. When 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 people were clamoring for pyro, what they were clamoring for was an addition of entertainment. If WWE went ahead and put like bag like people playing bagpipes or people playing piano or people playing the violin, that is just as good, if not better, for me than pyro. Pyro is only good for Brock Lesnar. You don't need anybody playing anything. He comes out, he does his fucking shit. Pyro goes off, perfect. But other people. They need, like, you get a little miniature orchestra out there. You get something. Uh, yes. And Bobby Roode with the choir when they did oh, the entrance at NXT. Fantastic. When the guy How's that that show, the, man? That was fucking great. When the guy played the violin for Shinsuke's entrance. I was at that show, too. They were both at TakeOver Toronto. Ember Moon, when Lizzie Hale played... At Evolution. Um, Fucking bulldog, man. (laughs) (laughs) Muscles. Yeah, these are muscles. Yep. (laughs) Fucking guys flex for life. Sid is like, I don't know where I am or what's going on. I wish I was playing softball. (laughs) Sid's looking around like, what's that smell? I think bulldog just shit his pants. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 he didn't. So Bulldog's looking at him like, or, 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 oh, here we go. Oh, good lord. Um, it's got the boob jump going. <laughs> British Bulldog fucking showing off his muscles to Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson doing. The All I see is his muscles in the background. Look at this fucking <laughs> asshole. They are get some done. He does that one, one more flex like this. Too. It wasn't bad. Yeah. I would say now Shinsuke's got a really good one. Not now. Before now, he did. I don't like him starting off at the ramp. Well, I don't know. Just doesn't have the same. Uh, I don't like because you know the crowd there is seeing him walk out and just stand in place. It's just kind of stupid. Good, so I gotta go take a shit out of my dick. I'll be back. <laughs> it's, it's gonna, it takes like 40 minutes. Oh, fuck. But it's, it, it should take that long. There's five guys in this match. But this is that match that, where it just becomes okay. this combobulated shit. Well, it's five guys and Shane Douglas's ego. Cause he was one of the worst ones. He thought he he thought shit didn't stink. It did. He wasn't that great. Well, the guy walking to the ring had an ego too. It's bullshit. Shane Douglas. I'm going to argue with you all fucking day on that. Shane Douglas is one of the best workers in the wrestling business. What? Well, even even Razor said he couldn't work with them because he refused to improve. They wanted to get. He wanted to get in the ring and work with. Shane wanted to get in the work with. Why that is though? Shane Douglas was better than that. To having to job to fucking Razor Ramon all the time. Seriously. He was good. They never gave him the chance to work. No, he didn't. The one entrance we forgot was the uh, Y2J Chris Jericho. Y2J Chris Jericho. I yeah. Agree. I loved his debut, to be honest. It's one of the greatest debuts, which we will see, is one of the greatest debuts in WWE history. I, I also agree with that. That was fucking incredible. He, he, with one of the greatest talkers in the business at the time. 
He even got. He even stumped The Rock in that fucking promo. Eddie Guerrero had a good entrance, especially when he came in with his fucking car. Yeah. His, uh, what do you call that? His high. Low rider. The tractor said it. Yeah. But no, I know what you mean, JP. It's just, I, I didn't really like that. I get that they, they didn't let him. Look, Murray, he was good in ECW, but then he was good it in just WWE. sounded like he had a massive, massive he ego was, for he Rome. Was he was good in WWE, he was good in WCW, WWE, WWE just didn't think that he was good enough to be one of their guys. Well, he went to fucking ECW and proved everybody fucking wrong. He could talk on yeah. the fucking mic. One of them, he's a really good talker. And he's oh. a good worker. He Who are you talking champion. about? He was their champion for ever. Yeah. ever. He was a franchise. Ooh. They call him the franchise for the reason. And it's Vince wanted him to do this gimmick. He didn't want to do the gimmick, so why should he give a shit? He did it. But he didn't want right. to. He is the franchise. I love Shane Douglas. I think he's a good worker. I don't care. I him. loved him in ECW. Yes. He just didn't get a chance to do it in WWE. If he would have got the chance to do it in WWE and Vince let him go, I think right. right. No, maybe, that, maybe that's why I don't think of him so favorably in, in WWE, and I understand that. Like, just it, it, I, I knew him from ECW more than anywhere else when I first started watching, and he was great in ECW. Uh, I'm looking at this list of top 50 entrances, and they've got Batista on here. It's all right. I, I, it's okay. It's okay. A lot of, a lot, you look at a lot of these, though, and it's going to have pyro. Batista's needed to have Pyro, but <laughs> at the same time, I was never a huge Batista fan anyway. But I guarantee you, a lot of these are going to have Pyro in them. John Morrison was yeah. up there. Yeah, it was all right. It's okay. Sin Cara is on there. It's <laughs> when he botched the phone half the time. He can, he can trampoline himself into the unemployment line, is all I'm going to say. Well, apparently, the. When they were trampoline their stuff right off TV. Fuck them. John Cena. John Cena. My favorite entrance for John Cena was when all those guys were like standing there. All the John Cena clones. Oh, yeah. Well, I like uh, the Chicago one. His thugonomics entrance is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of love for Rick Rude. Um, what one of the ones and I was never a fan of this character. Well, I like the character. I was never a fan of the person, but Sandman from ECW. Yeah. yeah probably yeah. one of the most iconic entrances in ECW. Yep. Yeah. Enter Sandman. He come in and from the crowd and drink like eight beers before he showed up and stumble around the ring. And that was the match. <laughs> Pack of <laughs> beer poured it on everyone. Yeah, that's what I mean. We basically probably named most of them. Now, the worst entrances of all time. <laughs> that's a different story. I like his, but his reminds me, uh, like, they had the same fireworks for his as they kind of did for uh, AJ Styles. Both good entrances, but yeah. so I think it was the same fireworks thing that they did for both those guys. But that was the last, like, big um, reveal that I was, like, shocked and loved was AJ Styles mm-hmm. entering WWE. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Just start the fucking match already. It's gonna get wild here in a minute. 
I actually did like Kurt Hennig's Mr. Perfect entrance, especially when they show us clips like of him catching the football and shit. We have to leave at least 40 minutes for Bret Hart. It can't be longer than that. Only? I'm not down with that. So we'll get to it, but do you think Nash really was frustrated at the end? What? What? And Nash swears the ring think he was so pissed. At, like at the end of his match tonight, he gets angry. Right? Yeah, he swears he's a fucker or something like that. Yeah. No, in my honest opinion, it's like Ke- Kevin Nash, my- Kevin Nash was a, a very generic worker. Like, uh, name me one Kevin Nash match that you remember. Outside of, I, the only one I remember is fucking Mabel entering the ring, and he big booted him, pinned him, and it ended in 10 seconds. How about when he... Uh, the only other one I can really remember is when he beat Bob Backland like, three seconds. How about Bigger Pokedoo? Yeah. yeah. So, so he, he's, well, oh, he's been involved in a lot that. of bad Nothing. ones. What he was part of was more important than the character he was. The match that he had with The Undertaker was pretty good at WrestleMania. Yeah, that was good. Just, he, he's very, like, he's very WWE-esque, like, five moves of doom type dude. Yeah. I like when he got, when it was <laughs> something with Undertaker versus Bret Hart and Bret Damon doing it, and Undertaker looks like, look, Farker, it's not all about you. Spanked him on the ass. Bad camera angle for this, I will say. Mm -hmm. That was a great entrance and is great in ring. Eric Rowan. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Fucking guy comes out now with the fucking lobster trap. <laughs> he literally comes out with a lobster trap. Who cares what's in it? What does it matter? It means it's nothing. Orange swaggle. It's I, orange swaggle. I, I I have a feeling it's fucking Bray Wyatt's cock, <laughs> just flopping around there to make him stop having sex with girls. It's, it's Bray Wyatt. But at the same time, it's like, at this point in time, does it matter? Like, why is this even being hidden? It's an animal. Who cares? Like, it, it's such a stupid fucking angle for a stupid fucking character. Fuck him, and I never want to see him again. Well, guess what, man? You're going to see him forever because, hey, you been getting... After his whole fucking Daniel Bryan angle was terrible. Like, let's launch this character off of one of the worst storylines in 2019. Right. I actually think that might be the worst outside of the Lana fucking oh. thing. Ooh. I think I'm actually more accepting of the Lana angle. Because at least it doesn't hide behind I, not being shit. I was until the England, until they part in England last week. Then it was like, fuck this. But you know what? Like, what did you expect it to be? It's kind of like true to its form, where that angle with Roman Reigns was just what the fuck? What a waste of time. Yep. Um, but Johnson straight out of the fucking baby oil factory. <laughs> that looks slick as fuck. <laughs> This guy's terrible. Say that again. Yeah. Wait till I get the WCW. You'll see shit. Who? Ahmed Johnson. Where did he get to WCW? 
Near the end, he gets the WW calls a big T, and he has a court case with Booker T in the storyline about the leather T, about who owns the leather T. That that sounds absolutely terrible. So I'm gonna agree with you. I don't even fucking remember that. Right there, that moonsault by Shawn Michaels is how moonsaults should be sold. Yeah. You shouldn't automatically be like the wind of the moonsault makes you fall down. He literally hit him with his like leg, and they both fell down. I hate the way moonsaults. Like, uh, if you're attacking somebody with a moonsault while they're standing nowadays, it's like I'm going to catch you, and this is how it's going to be. I like Lita's one. Oh God, I did not. I felt like she was about to pile drive herself on the floor. Several times. Yeah. She had like negative vertical. It's like jump, Lita. Don't fall. Fucking jump. Razor, fucking Razor Ramon. Yep. Yeah, which it's makes sense. This, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. This match is just stupid. Because it doesn't make sense. Not saying the wrestling's good, but the story that they're telling, they're just no there. There is literally no no storyline to tell because there's no storyline that makes sense. It's fucking Aja Kong all over again. <laughs> right? I think it was Conrad who asked Bruce on one of the podcasts why they didn't do this again. He goes, because it made no fucking sense. It was stupid. We already talked about that. We, yeah. we, I, trick, trick. That was hours ago, bro. I just remember yeah. it. You, you get with the with per, uh, program, bro. Yeah. You tell him, basement. I said nothing. And I will stay saying nothing. Oh, my God. <laughs> you want to talk about who must flex? <laughs> Bulldog must flex. Uh, at this point in time, British Bulldogs finisher should be a bicep curl. bicep curl. I swear to God, every time I see him, he looks like Owen Wilson. He does. It's the, the curse of the Owens. Wedding Crashers. <laughs> I just fuck. I fuck. I was never a fan of British Bulldog. I'm not saying he's bad or anything. He's actually well. I don't know what that was, but he reacted by being hit and going in the wrong direction. <laughs> that makes sense. He was never like bad in ring. He was just so generic, and his character was just like, "Here are my muscles. Oiled them for me." Oil. I liked when he was part of the tag team with Dynamite Kid and Matilda. I feel like this is kind of cool that they have to fight each other. I I I I think like I have like a certain amount of love for Razor Ramon that was never paid off. Yeah. Well, he'd always had issues with the drinking. Uh, I just feel like he was always like one of those guys that I always enjoyed seeing. Well, what the fuck? What kind of angle is this? <laughs> That's why I'm not in the nosebleeds because I don't want to watch it this way.
What's going on, dude? dude? We look like ants. Oh, you sounded like a baby. I was me bits. But I enjoyed it. That's fair. I don't mind. This match has not been bad. No. It doesn't make sense why it's, it's happening. Horrible. No. But, like, do. Oh. Struggling. Struggling. Yeah. That's why these two were fighting. They fought in yeah. the previous pay per view in a ladder match. So. Or at SummerSlam. So. But this is my problem with, like, Survivor Series matches in general. It's like. You, you literally have to account for the three guys on the side all the time because anybody can... They can't be standing there in order for a pin to happen. Otherwise, they should enter and disrupt a pin, right? Right. So you literally have to have a brawl happen before the first person can be pinned. And I remember we were talking with Dory about this, and she was she was talking about like Survivor Series matches not being this, but they were from the two I've seen of this era, they were all the heavily Survivor Series matches. Yeah. Yep. The Survivor Series match, so I'm going to say... I'm going to say right now, the best match of the night was it probably the women's match so far. It was, it was quick. It wasn't, didn't drag on. This match might actually overtake it, even though it doesn't make sense. Right. The wrestling has been good, so... Well, what I hope to happen is that, like, when they did the draft again mm -hmm. and they separated SmackDown from Raw, I hoped to be, like, a year-long thing where there was, like, issues between the brands. Mm -hmm. And that way Survivor Series would be reborn as an actual, like, playing ground for them fighting each other as brand versus brand. But they don't seem to be doing that at all. It just seems to be the same fucking shit over and over again. Just another way to restart the same fucking bullshit. It's a holy fuck, man. Yeah, I'm with you. The fact that you, you literally had people like flip brand to brand already just shows me that it's a fucking... Well, Fox Bot was a pile of shit. And now they have to air it constantly. Apparently they're happy with it. Yeah. Well, are they going to come out and say they don't? Well, I think if you got to pay that much, you should. Yeah, but something. have you ever known anybody to buy something that's expensive and say it's bad? Yeah. That's just... <laughs> Safe face in general. They don't come out and say it. They just because it's gonna hurt their product. Why would they say that? It makes no sense. No, that's what I'm saying. They don't come out and say it. They just cancel it. Which they are gonna cancel it because then they'll have to pay. They'll have to eat that one billion dollars. Which they are gonna eat that one billion dollars. And I can tell you that much right now. They just may not renew the contract. Which will leave Friday Night SmackDown without a place to have a show. They'll go back to USA, but... Or else they go to WWE Network. No, they will they go... Won't, they won't take it off of network TV. No. The, WWE's not going anywhere. USA will pick it back up if that happens. 
I mean, think it, it's still the most watched uh, wrestling show in the world today. Two point whatever million viewers. Yeah. AEW doesn't get that. The Raw doesn't get that. They get close, but an NXT doesn't get that. Oh, basement left. So, no. So I, I, as with with, we can sit here and say that as long as it's the highest rated t- uh, wrestling show on TV, Fox ain't gonna say shit. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, they are. Um, there's some guys that go above it. No. Oh. There was some guy on YouTube the other day. Go, he swore up and they goes, "My prediction for next year is SmackDown's gonna get canceled by Fox." Like they're not gonna cancel that soon. I mean, like after, like you said, after five years, they'll just not renew the contract. But they're not gonna cancel it. No, they, they won't cancel it. Yeah, I mean, it's like we talked about, what, and I know you guys don't. We all don't like them, but it's like we talked about Jordan Miles. If he does quit, he's got to pay back all that money they gave him. So he's fucked either way. I don't know if he's got to pay it back. He just won't get paid. <clears throat> I thought you used to be that to pay it back. Well, you can't. He already did a performance, so you can't pay it all back. That's not fair to him. Get, get paid to get laid. <laughs> Get paid to motherfucker pain like him. Did you say get paid to complain? Yeah. Yeah, motherfucker. That's, That's what he did. He got paid to complain. That's the problem. I talked about it on Sideline Study Podcast. Colin Kaepernick? It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. Look at oh, no, I agree. Him. Look at where it got him. He, he yeah. See what happens when complaining, what complaining does. Yeah. Yo, I agree. Yo, real talk. Ka- Kaepernick, the best quarterback ever, m- motherfucker. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> that, that Kaepernick fellow, me and him, we are real, man. We, He is the best quarterback ever. I'm the best rapper ever, m- motherfucker. <laughs> I would put him on, on my team, motherfucker. No, you Even XFL doesn't want him. That is something. I win all the games, motherfucker, because he's that good, motherfucker. These other the, the, these other teams are hating out here. Your ass does doesn't does make sense, motherfucker. <laughs> you don't make sense, man. There's the basement. Welcome back, buddy. Yeah, I'm on my phone. I lost What's up, nice What happened? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Lost, uh, I lost internet connection, man. I'm on my phone right now. Yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> well, you you just missed the skinny penis. Exactly. Poor Yo, because you're gonna look so tired. Uh, he's he just didn't die too long after this. So. He's a big boy. Yeah. What are you talking about? He's still alive, motherfucker. Me and him just, just smoked weed the other day. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> <laughs> well, fuck up. You're starting to rip him, motherfucker.
<laughs> you hate her? I'm not hating on anything. You just sound like a fucking idiot. You, you be out here drink, drinking that hater aid, motherfucker. Oh, you gonna make make from the stutter now, motherfucker? Mm-hmm. Yep. You do that, motherfucker? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 That's why he's so popular. Oh. Reason why I'm popular is because the rhymes real, man. Look, am I alive with you? What's the matter? I'll be right back. Yeah. I gotta go drop a J Pizzle, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, timestamp. One like, hour, one minutes, forty-five yeah. seconds. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to. My phone is acting like a fucking asshole right now. All right, I'm close enough. Remember those rocket popsicles? Yep. That's what I think about yep. when I look at British Bulldog. <laughs> it does. Uh, um, <laughs> well, I'm signing up for Disney Plus tonight. I, 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 I'm cruising along on that. I fucking love that channel. It's got, I can watch Star Wars Rebels. Don't, don't talk to me about it yet. Wait, I haven't watched any of the Mandalorian. Don't. Spoil. Rebels is on there now? Yep. Rebels was on there from the beginning. Is it the same for Canadians as it is for anybody else? I believe so. I think so. That's another one. I, well, 100%. I was going to watch it regardless. Just, that's the whole reason I'm going to get Disney Plus to watch it. And the rest is just extra. I'm gonna watch it tonight. Okay, so they're furthering the one, two, three kid with Razor Ramon storyline, which is cool. Ooh. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, Basement, they finally added uh, uh, YouTube to Switch. 
What does that mean? So you can watch it on your Switch? Yeah. Well, fuck, they... I don't understand why they're so, like, behind in certain things. Like, it seems like the Switch was released five years ago instead of now, which is crazy to me. Like, their online is so behind. Everything they do is so behind. It's like, fucking hell, man. I could buy, like, a $10 phone that I could watch YouTube on. The well, fuck is like, a console so well, far behind like, in that? Yeah, all their stuff is behind, like, but yet... But yet, their their games are still, like, like amazing. Yeah, but they, they just benefit from a solid online experience. And it's proven that people will pay for it. But the online experience is just such an aftermath for game developers on the fucking Nintendo Switch. Which I don't understand at all. They, they made a glorified fucking mobile device that doesn't have proper online play. At least the games aren't made for it. They're made for, like, bull- It's like, we're going to release Mario Party, but the only thing you can play is the mini games together. Fuck off, man. Can I play the actual game? No, 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 it's not allowed. This is not the way I'd ever want to see this match play out. Everybody against Yokozuna? Yeah. Yeah. The only way I'd want to see a play out like that is if Yokozuna just ran through all of them and proved what a force he was. That was it. Uh, 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 there you go. Oh, God. The bow dog, for some reason, is turning. He's like, what do you mean? <laughs> Why are you doing this? What? 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 Just beat the fucking shit out of him! Yeah, there you go. Just holy fuck, man. Why else would he do it? Yeah. Still, the best match of the night is the women's match, and it wasn't that good either. So, all the money's riding. Oh fuck! Why? Why is it stopping? Don't do this to me! Don't do this to me! Why is Skype still running? Well, it's only a matter of time. Oh, fucking eat my clitoris! <laughs> well, apparently not. The network did update today, so it's probably... Yeah, the network did update today. Uh, yeah. Can I get a timestamp, sadly? I've got two hours, two minutes, and 30 seconds. All right. Well, I uh, uh, I'm watching George W. Bush impersonator getting fed popcorn from Sonny. That's Bill Clinton. Whatever. But yes, you are. Yeah, she's right there. She's got her too. Okay. Uh, it it just did not age well. Is all I'm gonna say. I'll be your secretary. Well, open wide. I'd make a perfect undersecretary. What is this black and white bullshit? I don't know how many blowjobs Bill, Bill, Bill Clinton got from, from Sonny. <laughs> uh, 
and probably sound like this. <laughs> I, had, I just did not appreciate that. <laughs> no, I will say though, what is the best power bomb in the business? Now? Or ever? I think. Like, as a finishing move, I'm going to say, and I'm going to... People that had power bomb as a finishing move. I'm going to say Batista. I got no takers. The last ride? The last yeah. Ride. I, li- I liked it. I thought it, it was a good finisher for him. Um, I, I do like Kevin Owens' pop-up power bomb because it's kind of like, out of nowhere! Pop up power bomb. You can kind of surprise people with it. I like Even the, R- yeah. the uh, RKO. That's not a power bomb. Uh, Fine, Batiste is in there. Happy. I don't like the sit out power bomb. It's just not a move I like. No, I mean Kevin Nash did already. Jack Knight. Jack Knight. Yeah. Ah, who had a really good power bomb? Fuck. I know it was like more of an indie move when they did it. I can't remember who it was, but whatever. There was actually a discussion on Twitter who had the best Michinoku driver. I mean, Jesus Christ. Taka Michinoku? Taka Michinoku. Named after him for fuck's sake? No fucking argument. <laughs> If you get a move named after you, you probably have the best version of it. But is that necessarily true? I don't know. I mean, there's a move called the Trek, and Trek is horrible at it. Look at this. Look at this fucking upside down ball sacks flying around. Are you at Bret Hart's entrance? Okay, well then you're definitely going to see it in 10 seconds. No, he's there now. Upsetting on ball tracks? Ball tracks? Those are hearts, basement. That's what they want you to think. It looks more like an upside down ball sack than it looks like an actual heart. The upside down ball sack heart. <laughs> I, I just, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. It's like it makes no sense. He just, he just didn't have the character for it. That's the problem. It worked in the era. It would never work itself, today. The saying itself, the, the, the catchphrase itself made no sense. The best there is, the best there yeah. was, so he's not the best there was. He, he, he's no, he's he, he's literally the best. That's like, that is catchphrase. It's, it's like, well, he's the best there is, the best there ever was, the best there ever will be. He's the best ever of all time. I, I get that. No, I get it, but the best there was, ever was, it's like he's, now he's talking about himself in the past tense. It's like he's talking about himself in the present, the past. Well, I, I think he's just talking about, like, like he is the, the best past, present, and future, is what I take it as. Because I, I think that's how it sounds. <laughs> I don't know, fuck. Well, actually, it's the present. Yeah. yeah. But it, 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 it just, like, you can't be in three places at once, man. Well, he was the best, like, it's just comparative wise. He wasn't, but okay. That's his game. But, but the problem is, like, I don't buy into it. Me neither. 
What did you think of his other catchphrase, the excellence of execution? I mean, he was a pretty good wrestler. I can't yeah. say that he wasn't. He botched a couple of times. It's not... Yeah. I think it's like, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, like, no matter what a wrestler will botch, it depends on the two wrestlers in the ring. Wrestling matches exactly. depend on the two people in the ring, not just one. You might have the best right. wrestler in the world fighting against somebody that doesn't know how to wrestle, and you're going to end up in that way. Right. But I also yeah. feel like Bret Hart is hes only memorable because of when he was in wrestling. He is not someone that transcends time for me. Because he's not memorable in ring outside of what I've seen since then. His character wasn't. And that's what like the thing is the people that the people will remember the character you were, not what you did in ring as much. So being the best in ring, and this is why I'm so frustrated with WWE nowadays. I would had good wrestling, yeah, but everything has good wrestling. Every fucking promotion has good wrestling. It's the easiest fucking thing to do. So if you want to show me good wrestling, then you're gonna show me fucking any wrestling that's happening nowadays. Correct. Show me something else. Get to that place where you show me something else. Yeah. Otherwise, fuck I off. just really hate turnbuckles. Well, they're just matching each other. It's a uh, no holds barred match, I guess. I don't know. It's not, but... Ref will allow this. I did like Bret Hart's like ring gear, no pink and black. It is a no disqualification match. Pink and black was always cool. Yeah. The what? Yeah. They do. They do. But it kind of makes me think: was he or wasn't he? He was. <laughs> It's Canadian, for fuck's sake. Fuck it! There's a wrestler named Cheeseburger. Yep. 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 He wrestles in Ring of Honor, but he also wrestles in I saw him wrestle in New Japan. He wrestled, the last time I seen him wrestle was in the Royal Rumble thing that they do at the beginning of Wrestle Kingdom. It's the last time I seen him. Yeah, that's so probably the last time I saw him too. But in what way is that blimp hurting anybody's vision? I, I it's so it's high up. No, I, I don't know. I, I guess it was distracting, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. In a good way? If they put, like, okay, they do the blimp again, but they throw LED screens on that shit? That'd be good to me. I like that. That might be too distracting, though. What? They have LED screens on everything. They have LED screens on the ring. They have it on the fucking ring holes. They have LED screens all over the ramp. The whole ramp is LED screens. It's only a matter of time before the... No, no, no. It's FCC regulations. It could yeah. do it. I have a feeling that it's like yeah. if, it, if it crashed and killed people. No, it's just FCC regulations. They can't do it anymore. That's why Matt Hardy couldn't do the fucking... The Vanguard. Vanguard gimmick. Yeah. Because it was it's really weird. In, in the building. It's really weird to me. Nothing can fly. I want to Allah Akbar fucking in, in Saudi Arabia. I want to Allah Akbar fucking blimp. I don't think that has anything to do with it. <laughs> oh, They've no. taken over the blimp. He's know. got a exacto knife. I don't know why that is, but that's why they can't do it. It's FCC regulations. 
It, yeah. It's the fact that the regulations aren't specific enough for a lot of things, and this is the same thing. Okay, so Heather, you you watch that shit with the OC, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. The YouTube shit. This is the exact same fucking thing where laws and regulations make sense, but they're not like they're they're not particular enough. Where it's like, oh my god, if, if you're going. If you're gonna have cartoon characters or talk about cartoon characters, you're you're gonna be fine. Right. It's so ridiculous that that whole thing that I saw was so ridiculous that I hope it doesn't pass. I signed the petition. But they don't need a petition. It, the thing is, is it's voted on, so then they. This is in the United States, though. I don't know about Canada. Yeah, it's, 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 it will follow suit. Come on. I, do, but I, I don't know. I, I think they're going to have to work it in where you can't say, well, I'm not catering to children. Well, if you put certain things on there, the fucking... No, but this is this is the difference. It's like you say you're not kid. The, what 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 the guy was explaining, and I'm pretty sure this is probably how the rule the rule will work. You're not kidding to children. You can't have anything in terms of content, or um. So you you well, so for instance, I can't play a game that is an every one game that anybody could play. It's not rated R or teen or anything like that. And I can't play it because children will watch it, is all I'm hearing. Essentially, that's how it's going to work. Because if you sit there and do what you usually do with your videos and drop a cuss word in it, you will be fine. Which to me makes no sense. Because all they need to say is, like, is your video... The, the problem, though, is YouTube is like, is your video uh, made for kids? No. Is your video made for 18 plus? Not really, because 18 plus, now now we're assuming that 18 plus is the only people that can hear a cuss word. And now you're assuming that, like, certain cuss words. The problem is, too, like, with a lot of content creators, not myself, but, like, anybody that does their shit that's going to be, like, you know. If I have to say, yes, it's for 18 plus, they have to forego monetization ads being played on it at all. Which makes no sense to me. Because in what world don't advertisements play for 18 plus content? No, the, the, the whole thing seems like it shouldn't pass and I hope it doesn't. It sounds horrible. But, but the problem is, it's already hard enough. Yep. It's already hard enough. So, like, how much harder does it really need to get before people just, like, say, eh, I guess I'm going to go back to work at the glue factory. Right. Instead of being somebody that people want to see. Like, yeah, all, all, all it essentially is doing, that rule, is it, it needs to be, like, you're not going to protect kids from understanding how adults are. Right. Don't be fucking stupid. It's so backwards. It is. Like, fuck, man. Most kids watch adult things regardless. It's like, oh, we're going to make it so they can't. But are you stupid? Right. It's going to happen back. no matter what. So stop placating to children and understand that kids are growing up faster then, then everybody would have wanted because things are available. I, it's just such a backwards law to me that it doesn't make any sense. Well, this was a law that was originally written in 1998. But it's also a law that it, if they do do it, it kills the Second Amendment. Or no, the First Amendment. But, but a lot of people okay, in this video, I will say for a fact, is full of shit at times. Because like, well, they can hit you with a $43,000 fine. I'm like, good luck. Throwing $43,000 fines on 99% of content made. Because all you're looking at is life in court. Yep. 
And nobody's going to allow that. The court system doesn't want it, so it's not going to happen. The government doesn't want it, so it's not going to happen. Bottom line is, like, it's just not... I, I look at this whole thing, and I think it's, like, posturing without actually saying anything. Like, the the, the whole thing that Dan Rex put there, I was like, eh. The, the, this guy is... He's, he, the, first of all, it hasn't happened. Second of all, I don't think it's going to happen to the extent that they're saying. Because it can't. It just literally... There's no literal way it can. Yeah. Because then you'll get... Well, how come I got fined and this guy didn't get fined? What's the Well, how, how, I had a cartoon character. Well, what about family... Like you said, what about family guy? Simpsons, anything that shows cartoon characters. So all of a sudden, cartoon characters are only meant for kids. South Park, dead. Everything is dead. Well, I made no, it's only YouTube. I made mention of that to Heather. I said then Fox is fucked because they're going to have to get rid of Family Guy. But I, I don't understand who even, like, proposed this. They have to be the most fucking dumb fucking assholes in the world. And the thing is, like, when it comes to, like, law enforcement, it comes to people that... Want to speak up the most and have their... It's a bunch of fucking assholes that don't understand the world is what it is. Oh my god, I hate that my kid could see something negative. It's like, well, your kid's going to see something negative but just by going to school. So, you might as well shut the fuck up and deal with it when it happens. Yeah. Instead of trying to prevent it from happening. Because, guess what? Your kid's going to become an adult and they're going to say... Fuck off, man. I like this this type of ruling is so it makes me fucking angry, man. But there's no way it's gonna work no. in my in my opinion. I don't think it works either. There's no way. Because it going through changes it has such a huge change on like society in general. And YouTube in general? Yeah. I don't understand it. Don't you don't want your kid to see adult content? Don't give them a YouTube. That's it. They don't need to watch YouTube. And eventually, when their friends say, you need to see YouTube to see this, then they're going to see it, and they're going to see adult content. They'll all... This was the same way it was for everybody to this point. When I was a kid, I saw adult content before adult content was available to me constantly. Mm -hmm. So who cares, man? It's going to happen. Stop pretending and start understanding the way the world works. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> at, at, the, at the ripe age of three, Basement saw his first porno. <laughs> well, it's more like Ten. Yeah, I watched a bunch of horror movies made for people that should never have watched them when I was a child. Whatever, man. My parents took me to the movie Jaws when I was fucking four years old. There you go. Like, I just don't understand. Like, uh, if you don't see it, it's not real. Don't be stupid, man. The world's a shit show. A complete trash festival. So stop stop preventing your kids from seeing what's real. Right, and I cried when the shark died. I laughed when the shark ate people. <laughs> you you just kind of like the hero of that show. Well, that explains a whole lot. But I feel like all you're doing is postponing the inevitable. So how much work do you really want to put into that? It's like, the more we can keep kids, kids, the better. But more. Right. You there? Awesome. And let them deal with it. No, there it is. You cut out. It's fine. Um, yeah, I, I, man, we were talking the other night, we were sitting down, we had dinner at the hotel, and we were sitting there talking at the, 
bar. Bar. And it's active music. It's like at sixty percent. It's running really fucking slow. And uh, we were sitting at the bar. You guys there? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you, you can tell your kid that's a boy, he's a girl, but you can't tell him to or show him fucking critters the movie. Just makes, makes no fucking sense, sense man. man. In fact, yeah, like, like this, this world, world has angered, angered me to a point. point. Right. But we uh, went. We were downstairs eating, and we started talking. And I, I, I told everybody, I, I can almost guarantee you that the very first words that are going to come out of Wendy's mouth is going to be, "fuck." I, I, I can almost guarantee it. Her first big word is going to be fuck. So. <laughs> but I feel like the whole idea of like, oh, kid, kid can't see this, kid can't see, see for what though? It's a, it's an expression. The what, what I don't want a kid to be doing is doing things that are way beyond their understanding. Language is not. Language is where... that That's a kid's wheelhouse. Right. And saying fuck or saying shit as a child, anything like that, I, I, I would chastise just because the world has told me to do it. Right. That's the only reason I would say so. What you say is not what you do. And as soon as the kid starts doing something that I would be against, that's different. Right. Right. Heather, can you come here and see what the fuck is going on here? Because this right here is fine, and all of a sudden it's just... Alright, well, it's... Fucking the stream is going to be shit, but whatever. So... It's going to be what it's going to be, unfortunately. Exchange it, man. Do you still have time? I can't. Why? Well, it's not. It's brand new. Yeah, it doesn't matter though. It's like a car. When a car is a lemon, a car is a lemon. I don't know if it's a lemon. I think it's just something that we need to fix. No, I'm gonna say right now it's a lemon. Just do it. Just do it for the sanity of yourself. I'm saying. No, no, I'm telling you right now, do it for the sake of yourself and for Heather and for everybody involved. It's like anything else. It, it, it doesn't, just because it's new doesn't mean it's good. I can tell you right now, if I were to go anywhere else, I, if I was to go back, trade it in, I'd be getting the same thing. Because well, you, you, you well, don't get the same thing as what I'm saying. I have to, basement. Why do you have to get the same fucking I computer? I don't have the money to fucking buy. A you don't have, have to have that much more money than what you're paying right now. But you just don't get the same thing. If it's four hundred dollars, spend four fifty. There isn't a computer for four fifty. I'd have to pay an additional five hundred dollars for another. So nine hundred dollars? Yeah. No, I, I I could I could find you a computer for less than that American dollars. That's good. I'm saying right now it's like computers are like cars. If they give you problems right or, right away, do not do not. Do the I'm loyal to it for no reason. Type of idea.
The thing is, like, get a get a gaming PC, even the cheapest is better than a regular PC because that's what you're using it for. Gaming PCs are made for streaming and stuff like that, so they're going to have all the specs to be that way. Even if they're, like, the lowest end, they're still going to have the specs to be for what you're looking for. But if you're already, like, encountering problems with that PC, I... Oh, no, I'm not... It's just the CPU is running high. For no reason. So, yeah, exchange immediately is what I'm going to say. I know you don't want to do it, man, but it's going to save you so much, like, grief in the long run. Well, I guess Christmas would be shot. Just exchange it for basically something that's, like, $50 more max. Or you can exchange it for the same computer. As long as you don't have high running CPU used for no reason. Well, it runs off the same thing. The yeah, but they're not the same. It's just like, every, okay, so I could buy a, a, a Civic, and you could buy a Civic, and they're not going to be the same vehicle. It's the exact same idea with computers. If you have a problem with a high running CPU for no reason, exchange it. You didn't create the problem. You should not have to deal with it or fix it. Exchange it. You can get the same computer again if you want to, but like get to a point where you're not running high CPU for no reason because that just means it was built poorly or something's not working. Well, I'll see what I can do. I mean, you're saying like exchanging it, at least you give yourself a chance to find something that works the way it used to work, what you had before. But accepting the fact that something's not running great because of something you're doing with the PC that you just bought, no. Don't do that. You're accepting a lemon, and you're going to be angry at that lemon for years. But I will say, if you have the capability to do it, uh, cheap gaming PC is probably the best way to go. Um, look online. Look at other options. They have one at Walmart, I just don't trust it. But why? I don't know. Well, exactly. I, well I'll look into it. That's all I can say. Well, what's, what's the, the brand? brand? I don't even know. I think it was, um... It's HP. Is it a gaming computer or not? Yes, it is. Anyways, this is a pretty good match. It actually is a pretty good match. We've got these two guys going at it strong. It's not a typical.